Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 9th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Honolulu, Hawaii. We got two updates from Apple, one for iCloud for Windows. It fixes a number of WebKit vulnerabilities and in addition, a SQL Lite issue. Then we also got an update for iOS. This is iOS 12.01. And this is sort of a quick bug fix release that fixes some critical bugs that came up in iOS 12, which was released a couple weeks ago. Both vulnerabilities being addressed here are lock screen bypass vulnerabilities, one affected voiceover and would allow access to photos and contacts from a locked phone. And the second lock screen bypass was related to allowing uh, user access to the share function on the locked device. This was fixed via updating Quick Look. And Intel announced its ninth generation CPUs. And with that, but only as a footnote on a slide, they also announced that this next generation of CPU will include mitigation against various versions of Spectre and Meltdown. This footnote lists five different vulnerabilities, two of which are mitigated in hardware. That's Meltdown version 3, the rogue data cache load, as well as the L1 terminal fault, which was one of the more recent discoveries. Other vulnerabilities are mitigated with a mix of microcode and software. This matches up with what Intel promised back in March. What we of course don't know is if some of these fixes will mitigate some of the performance issues that people have reported from prior patches. And Microsoft late last week had to withdraw its October 2018 update for Windows 10. Now, this was a functional update, not a security update, also known as version 1809. And the reason this particular update had to be withdrawn was that it apparently caused files to be deleted on users' systems. If you were affected by this, Microsoft now has a workaround for you to recover those deleted files. Also, there's an other issue with deleted files that's actually an intended feature. And that's that cleaning up your disk will automatically also clean out and delete files in your download folder. In the past, this particular feature has really more affected temporary files and the like. I guess in some way downloaded files are intended to be more temporary. And yes, I see in my own download folder that it often accumulates a lot of junk over the years. So it makes sense to delete these files from time to time. Just if you don't expect it, be aware you can turn this feature off. This feature is also known as Storage Sense and either can be triggered manually if you would like to clean up your disk or it can also kick in automatically if your free disk space drops below a critical number. And Thomas Reed with Malwarebytes has published a pre-announcement of some work they're going to release soon that will show how macOS code signatures aren't really sufficient. The problem here apparently is that macOS doesn't really verify these code signatures very frequently. So an attacker could easily swap a good binary for a bad one without the operating system necessarily discovering this. Now, a lot of software on macOS is signed and you can tell macOS not to allow you to install any software that's not signed. But apparently there are also some hooks that a developer can use to sort of get macOS to check these signatures more frequently. If a developer takes advantage of this, then signatures will be tested on each execution of the application, but that's not what's happening by default. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Don't forget it's Patch Tuesday again and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.